Hello, my good friends. How are you doing today? This is episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of BTD Five Science. Yes, it's already on on episode seven. So hopefully you guys are enjoying. If you are, please keep on liking these for me and tell me what you think about them. And if you want me to start a second channel to start talking about these things more often, let me know. So I wanted to talk about a bunch of cool facts about the brain right from the start. I think that's the coolest way to talk about these things because getting you guys interested in one of the main things that I want you guys to do. And you know what, some interesting facts is a good way to start. So let's start them off. These are all completely random facts, but they all have to do with the brain. In early pregnancy, a developing brain multiplies at a rate of about 250,000 neurons per minute. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves, and if you have to actually memorize them, there's a mnemonic for them that Amanda made up for me, which is my girlfriend, by the way. Oh, 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 to touch and feel virgin girls' vaginas. So hot. Oh, my goodness. So that's Amanda's brain for you. That's what she tends to make up. Uh, the short-term short -term memory, or the working memory, can usually hold about seven digits, t depending on the person and depending how good you are at memorizing things really quick. Um, blood vessels. Oh, God, guys, this one was a pretty crazy one. There are about 100,000 miles of blood vessels in one single brain. Also, the brain is extremely fat. It's about 60% fat, or more. It can be even more than 60% fat. While you're awake, your, your brain generates about 10 to 23 watts of power, or enough to light a light bulb. Which I thought was pretty cool as well. Now... What, is, what does the human brain do? Well, it makes up every single thing you think about, every single thing you do, everything you feel. It controls your pain. It controls everything that you are. Your brain is you. It doesn't matter if you say that your brain is some weird thing and your body controls everything, because it's not. It's all about your brain, guys. And that also brings up the fact about the Matrix. If you guys have seen the Matrix, you'd realize that maybe... We're in some sort of matrix where nothing actually exists. If you can control your brain, you can control everything. We could be in a fake world right now where our brain is connected to some crazy machine that makes a fake world for our brain to think that we're in, and our body is just some crazy thing that our brain makes up, and that's what the matrix is basically about. So if you haven't paid attention to that in the matrix, and if you haven't seen the matrix, pay attention to that and watch it, because it's definitely interesting. And if you think about our brain just being a vessel of, inf of information that leads us to anywhere, it is kind of crazy to think about. So what, what is the brain? It's basically billions of cells, in fact, about a hundred billion cells, called neurons. And they are specialized cells, but you know, most of our cells are kind of circular. These cells are actually kind of weird looking. They're kind of long and spaced out and spread out into these long little networks that, uh, basically look like a system, a system of electrical signals just going around in crazy places, and it looks kind of weird if you actually do see a, si a system of these uh, dendrites and uh, neurons. Uh, they send and receive information, so these, these little cells, these neurons, send and receive information, and that's basically how you think. Is just information getting sent from one neuron to another, and that's what makes it so crazy. That all your brain is doing is just all these hundred, hundreds of billions of cells just interacting with each other that make you think, see, smell, understand, feel pain. All these crazy things are just cells interacting, and they control your entire body as well. Uh, basically, what makes it up? So, like, what is one of these uh, dendrites? What are one of these neurons? Well, the neuron is made up of a couple parts. It's made up of, like, a cell body, an axon, and a dendrite. So, what happens is, is a dendrite is going to receive a signal from another um, axon. And uh, a lot of people tend to think that the brain is controlled 100% by electricity, and that's not quite true either. It's actually a mixture of electricity and neuronal signals or chemical signals in the brain and it's kinda cool how these things work and how can they, they can work so fast and that's one of the key things is that you don't think that you're thinking because you think thinking is happening at an instantaneous speed but it's really not uh... what how much time it takes for something you see to go into your brain get registered and uh... uh... you actually to understand what you're seeing actually does take a minute amount of time even though it's extremely fast it does take a tiny amount of time and um... It's actually quite uh, interesting to understand that it takes time because if you look at like slow mo videos or something like that, or if there's a lot of weird uh, ways that you can test this out as well. So, 
The way that a dendrite will actually read a signal is that an axon, this thing that's sending a signal to a different neuron, will an electrical signal will release all these vesicles or chemical signals that will then leach onto another dendrite. And the dendrite basically um, has all these little little things on there. I'm trying not to use a lot of special hard words for you guys to understand, but it has all these things on it that these chemical signals latch onto, and then they open up little pores in the dendrite, and then these, and then instead of these chemical signals that uh, got sent to the dendrite, what will happen is a bunch of ions that are just floating on in the floating around in the brain are what actually send the signal or allow the signal to be sent. So if you have a lot, you have a lot of uh, uh, simple ions like potassium and sodium that actually send the signals or allow the signal to be allow another electrical signal to be sent. And it's kind of complicated exactly how a brain works. You know, I've, you can take years upon years of school to understand these things. But I'm trying to give you a quick 10-minute briefing of how these, brain, how these uh, cells work. And it might be a little bit better if you actually watch one of those videos with uh, uh, an animation or something like that compared to me just talking. Maybe I will make one of those eventually. Or if I can find somebody who can make animations for me, that would be really freaking sweet. So, um... Each one of these neurons doesn't just make one connection, though. Instead of just, you know, one of these axons leading to one dendrite, and then it just leads on to a single file line of, of uh, connections, they actually connect to thousands upon thousands of these little connections between each other. And that's what makes your brain so cool, is that one, one neuron doesn't talk to another neuron. One neuron can talk to... 20,000 neurons. In fact, I think what they said is there's about about 1,000 to 10,000 connections per neuron, and then some have up to like 50,000, but that's uncommon. They're more like 1,000 to 10,000 connections per neuron, which I think is pretty darn high if you think about it. If each one sent out one to 1,000, then that, those 10,000 could send out another one, and you could turn into basically 100,000, and then quickly you could get up to a billion in a couple seconds. Each of them could talk to them. That's not exactly what happens, but it could happen. Uh, one of the cool things about your brain is that it's set up in kind of a, a interesting way. Uh, if you think about evolution, the the way that uh, brains evolved over time is that we have the oldest part of our brain actually basically in the center part of our brain, or more towards our brain stem, spinal cord. Basically, if you touch the very back top of your neck, that's exactly where your brain stem is and your spinal cord. And that's basically the oldest part of the brain, and that is controlling basically a lot of your uh, fundamental things that make you live. Breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, hunger, thirst, a bunch of emotions like fear, love, and hate. And um, they, they have a bunch to do with the brainstem. They do have some other parts of the brain that do uh, uh, affect or control them as well. So it's not just 100% involved only in the brainstem. A lot of the parts of your brain interact with each other, and that's what makes it so cool. Like I said, those neurons really connect to each other in crazy ways. And having everything connect helps you... Uh, able to uh, keep things more complicated, basically, makes your brain work more fancy and makes our, us have a higher sense of understanding or a higher sense of learning than uh, some of the more primitive animals. Then you have something called the thalamus, which is basically just right above that, just right above the brainstem. It's pretty big uh, for uh, part of your um, brain, and it basically makes you uh, have a spatial working memory. So, for example, if you left your cup on the desk, you'd remember you left your cup on the desk, or something like that. So, I mean, it, it does have a lot more stuff that it does, but that's one of the key key concepts I want you guys to understand. The hippocampus, that thing's like kind of surrounding the thalamus. It, it's kind of like a weird shape. It's not like a salad ball, like some of the other things that we see. Uh, the thalamus it basically has all of the sensory information that we perceive goes through that and then goes to different parts of the brain. So it goes to that usually first. Sometimes it goes to other places first and then goes eventually to the thalamus. Pretty much all sensory information will go through the thalamus at some point. Um, then we have the cerebral cortex. And the cerebral cortex is actually one of the most interesting things about our brain. That's what gives us our, si our like higher sense of learning and higher sense of understanding. The cerebral cortex, that's the newest part of the brain, and it has four cortices. So there is the uh, 
there's basically four sections to it. In the very, very back section, there is the occipital lobe, and that basically helps us to see. It makes us understand what we're seeing and stuff like that. The parietal lobe, it has a lot of sensory information, so it integrates with vision as well as the rest of our senses and helps us understand uh, uh, a lot of the stuff that we're perceiving again. Um, and if you think about it, every, pretty much a lot of parts of the brain have to do with us perceiving our outside world. And then we have the temporal lobe, the temporal lobe. It is the memory and learning center. So without that thing, you are not going to learn very much. In fact, people with uh, tempo lo temporal lobe disorders tend not to be able to learn very well. And uh, oftentimes, if you've ever seen uh, some of uh, those videos where you see like 10 second Tom or something like that, that's usually where they have a disorder is in the temporal lobe, and they just can't memorize things, and they can't remember things. 10 second Tom. Um, then you have the frontal lobe. It is very, very important in humans. It has to do with higher emotions, personality, language, decisions, movement, basically a lot of the things that we think makes us a human. And then the last one I wanted to talk about is the cerebellum, and that is the coordination center of the brain. Without that, you couldn't walk, you probably couldn't talk very well, and... You couldn't run, you couldn't balance, you couldn't move your hands in an organized fashion. You would not be able to do anything without the cerebellum. So, uh, you have to understand, even though I'm giving the, you these basic understandings of what each part of the brain does, they're all completely interconnected, and if you pretty much got rid of uh, a couple parts of your brain, or if you had damage to certain parts of the brain, it affects a lot of things, not just one of them. But the cool thing about the human brain is, is if you get damaged in one part of your brain, oftentimes it'll actually switch over and find a different part of your brain to help you out with that damaged part of the brain, and that's the cool plasticity part about the brain. The brain is not just static and it's going to stay the same thing all the time. New connections are made all the time, guys, and your brain really wants to make, make itself work as well as possibly can, and it likes it's plastic, and it changes over time to make you the best person that you can be. So be the best person you can be, because that's what your brain wants. Your brain wants you to be effective, so you guys can be effective. And if I made any mistakes in this video, I'm sorry. Let me know in the comments, and I'll put an annotation in there to help fix that problem. Uh, thank you for watching, and have a great day.